Welcome back to MVM. Today we have a preview for a summer release. Yes, we're talking possibly Gen Con 2020. This is AEG's newest game called Mariposas from designer Elizabeth Hargrave. Yeah, this is her follow-up to Wingspan, or the next game anyway. And again, just like you might expect, it has a very nature-like theme. This is going to be following monarch butterflies migration from down in South America and Mexico up through North America and back again. And just like Wingspan, there's a lot of stuff that you're going to learn about butterflies. Yeah. One of the th unique things we found out was that butterflies, as they migrate up into the U.S., they actually die. They never return back to Mexico. Yeah, apparently not one monarch butterfly will make the trip, the round trip, right. effectively. They come up, they breed, they multiply, and then maybe their offspring come back. And that's what you'll be doing in this game. You're representing one of those monarch butterflies who are going to reproduce, come up into the United States, and then try to make it back to Mexico to score points. Now, the game is going to be played over three different seasons. You have the spring, the summer, and then the fall. And each of these seasons has a number of turns you're going to take, four, five, and six, depending upon the season that you're playing in. Yeah, so unlike Wingspan, you're actually going to be taking more turns each of the seasons. The other thing you're going to see on the board here is this abstracted map. Like I said, this is going to start down in Mexico, come up through North America, and actually reach to the bottom portion of Canada, in fact. Yeah, the actual map is broken into a number of different sections. These are going to be color-coded. These are important for the scoring cards, but they're also going to have flowers in their locations. These flowers are the set collection portion of the game. You're going to be going to these areas, collecting those, trying to breed the monarchs. And then you're going to have a lot of different waypoints, which are face down. Another interesting point about monarch butterflies is that they are dying off. Yeah. And what people are doing is they're building habitats for monarch butterflies to breed and return back to Mexico. So you're going to be going to these way stations. That's why they have names on them, like Atlanta and New Orleans. They're not actually like bus tickets that monarchs are going to take <laughs> to those areas, obviously. Right. And these things are also going to come into play with some of those scoring cards. The scoring cards are really interesting because while one of them is face up and everyone knows at the beginning of the game, the other ones are face down and you're going to have to be breeding your butterflies in order to turn them up. And there's a lot of different cards. So you're going to be starting with a variable different one each time that you play the game. All right, the game is actually very simple to play. Each of the players is going to start with a monarch butterfly down in Mexico as a number one. Each player has a number of different butterflies that they're going to be able to use, and those rate from one up to four. And that's important because you're always going to be breeding the higher numbers. Right. If you're going to breed a one, it's going to create a two. A two is going to create a three, and a three is going to create a four. And in fact, the fours can be bred, and they'll just flip over and turn into two level four monarch butterflies, which is nice because you can move them together. All right, so at the start of the game, each of the players is going to be dealt two of these action cards. These are what you're going to be deciding to use on your turn. It's actually really simple. On your turn, you're simply deciding one of the two cards to use, and you're then revealing it. All of these cards typically allow your butterflies or butterfly to move a number of different locations on the map. Some of them are going to allow you to move multiples, some of them are going to allow you to move just one. And you do have some special action cards as well that will allow you to repeat those. But let's talk about each of the cards kind of individually and what you have. I have a card right here that allows you to move a single butterfly four spaces. And when you move, you're simply taking that butterfly and moving them through locations. You're going to collect wherever that butterfly lands and not the spaces you move through. In this case, I collect the flower that it lands on. And I simply look at that icon and then I take that token and place it in front of me. Now this card has a special ability that also allows me to collect any one of the flowers around it as well. Yeah, and other cards like this one, for example, is not going to move your butterfly or butterflies as far, but it is going to give you a little bit more flexibility. As you can see, it has three butterflies moving one space each. Now, I could use this on one butterfly, for instance, at the beginning of the game, and move one, and then move it again, and then move it again, moving the three spaces. But because it's three separate moves, I will collect the flower token from each of those spaces. Now, you could also divide this up across multiple butterflies, moving one another one and another one, or one, two spaces, and so on. Now, you just mentioned multiple butterflies. Well, you each only start with one butterfly on the board, but you're going to notice a number of different locations on the board that are surrounded by flower areas. If you're in one of these areas, you're able to breed. Yeah, this is the milkweed spot. And if you happen to land on that space, it doesn't have to be the final movement, but if your butterfly lands on that space, quote unquote, you can optionally breed your butterfly. To breed your butterfly, you're going to go from, for instance, a one to a two by discarding any two of the same flower tokens or 
any three flower tokens total. So as you're collecting flower tokens, you're going to want to collect sets and a bunch of the same kind, or potentially just a bunch, knowing that you can always discard any three to go from a one to a two. Now, if you're going from a two to a three, it's going to take three, a three to four is going to take four, and so on. And anytime you breed, you're going to take your next highest one and place it on top of it according to whichever type of uh, butterfly that you bred at that time. Now, why are you moving around? Why are you trying to do this? Well, you're gonna score victory points at the end of a round, and a round is going to end once each player has four cards in front of them. When it's your turn, you're simply taking, placing one card and then drawing a new card. And you're gonna go around the table until each player has taken four actions in the spring. At the end of the spring, you're gonna look at that goal card, and that's what you're trying to achieve for the round. Yeah, you're gonna score the card. You just look at the top of the card, and for this one, for example, if you have two butterflies in red spaces north of Lawrence, and that's any of these red spaces just right here, you're gonna be able to score points. You need to have two of the butterflies in those spaces. You can have other butterflies elsewhere, but that's gonna score you six points. And likewise, if you have two butterflies in orange spaces to the east of Houston, you're going to be able to score another six points. So you can do that, but just know that it might not set you up for scoring on the next card and the card after that. Speaking of which, those cards are gonna hold butterflies, one for each player on the summer card and two for each player on the fall card. When you breed, you first have to take the butterflies of your color off of that card when you breed. The moment all of those butterflies have been removed, that card is going to be flipped. Now this doesn't trigger moving on into that season, but it will just give you some of that sort of prior information about what scoring is gonna look like so you can set that up as well. Now there's some other things that are gonna happen at the end of a season as well. At the end of spring, each of the players is gonna remove their one from the board. Those monarch butterflies have just died off. And then you're going to be able to breed before that monarch butterfly dies off a two from your side of the thing if you have one available. This kind of naturally allows you to breed without having to go to those milkweed areas. Yeah, and it's an important part of the game too because if you've bred so much that you don't have any twos at the end of spring, you're not going to be able to benefit from that free breeding, if you will. So you would definitely want to take that into consideration. Now let's talk about the waypoints as well. There's a lot of spots on the board that have these tokens. And if you land and in your position in those areas, you're allowed to flip those tokens over. These tokens can represent a variety of different things, but the majority of them are going to be tied into that life cycle that you see over there. Yeah, this life cycle board has life cycle cards in three different colors. For example, we flipped the one in Houston. If you were the first one to flip there, you'd be able to take this caterpillar from the blue cards. And then if you were, the, like I said, the first person to do so, you also get to roll this flower die and take a corresponding flower token. Anyone else can still go there in future rounds of the game. You're just gonna get the blue caterpillar though. You won't be able to roll the die. And there's a variety of other tokens that can also be resolved. Each of these cards that you have at the end of the game is going to be worth one victory point. So every life cycle card that you're able to collect is going to gain you victory points. But you also get to gain a bonus if you have all four from a particular color. Yeah, once you have four of these life cycle cards, you're able to take the action on these tokens right here. For example, if I had all of the blue life cycle cards, I would be able to take an extra turn at the end of fall, which is significant because everyone else is going to be taking six turns. I'll be able to take seven, moving my monarch butterflies that much further. And speaking of waypoints, there's some other tokens, as I already mentioned. This token, for example, is going to give you special cards. Now, there are three different types of special action cards in the game that are tied to these waypoints. This one in particular is simply going to stay on your side of the table face up and you can use it instead of one of those action cards and then there are other ones that are simply going to allow you to move an extra butterfly one space and collect or to add two movement to your butterfly and again all of these are tied to the waypoint tokens so once everyone has taken four turns in spring you are going to go through that process jeremy mentioned and move on to the summer you're going to do the same exact thing taking five turns this time and then at the end of that move on to fall, again doing the same thing but taking six turns. Now, what do you want to do all this time? You want to move your monarch butterflies up here, you want to try to score those cards, but one thing you need to remember is you want to get some of your generation four butterflies back down here. Because once you get back down here making the full migration, any level four butterfly down here is going to score you points according to how many you have there.
And that's how you play Mariposas. As we said, this is a game of set collection where you're going up into the United States, collecting the right type of flowers in order to breed your monarchs as quickly as possible, score those goals, and get back into Mexico to get additional points at the end of the game. Yeah, it has an interesting balance of scoring. You can score those goals, or you can really try a different strategy and try to get as many of the butterflies back down here at the end of the game. Trying to balance between those and maximize your score is really where the game is at. So this is a two to five player game that's coming out roughly in summer from AEG and designer Elizabeth Hargrave. If you have any questions about the game, make them in the comments below. Subscribe to us, follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, and everything else that we do, and we'll catch you guys next time. Bye-bye.